idea that something should be done about uh, re-establishing uh, Nalan University has come from many Asian countries who value the connection with uh, uh, with Nalanda and the whole Buddhist culture in India. And these countries of East Asia are very attached both to the site of Nalanda, to Rajgir, to Gaya and uh, so on. So there was a desire and India promised at the East Asia summit that Nalanda would be revived. And in 2007, a mentor group was set up by the then a foreign minister, currently the Rashtrapati of the country, uh, Mr. Pranam Mukherjee. And uh, Professor Ramathya Sen was appointed as the chairman of the mentor group. Um, my involvement was um, uh, to propose it as an international university because it was an international university. And if we can recreate it as an international university, then it can do some of the good which your own university did. And it arose out of a conversation I had with uh, Montek Singh Aluwalia, uh, vice chairman of the planning commission. I think it was in 2006 or 2007. And uh, he asked me to write him a paper, which I did happily. And uh, the prime minister, Manmohan Singh, uh, agreed to establish a mentors group. We got Amatya to chair. My vision for Nalanda University is what the vision of the old Nalanda University was, to offer excellent education, the best at, the, at that time and best now mm -hmm. in the world, and do it without any kind of restriction of geography or other divisions like religion, nationality and so on. And I think it is very important to understand the commitment of Old Nalanda University for the highest quality education in the world, along with accepting ideas, good ideas, ideas that win arguments, um, no matter where they come from. That's what made Nalanda great, and that's what we want the present Nalanda to be great about. Creating that spirit of men living in harmony with men, men living in harmony with nature, men living as part of nature, which was the old conception of Nalanda, that's not easy. But if we can achieve, if we can achieve even a part of it, we would have created something which would help make this a better world uh, for the 21st century. Taking over as uh, Chancellor from Amatya Sen, I think his shoes are, impo are impossible to fill. I mean, he has academic credentials, he has uh, uh, international network, which I cannot even hope to, to, to match. Uh, but I've been in politics for many years, so I will, I will do what I can in the field which I'm good at, uh, but uh, continue to rely on Amatya Sen, who, who remains on the board, who, who promised me that he'll continue to be involved. Well, we, when we decided on um, the framework of the university, we started with seven schools. Uh, we realized that not all schools can come on board uh, at the same time. So we wanted to introduce them in a phased manner. So the first two schools that we decided to implement was the School of uh, Environment and Ecology, and the second one was on Historical Studies. So these schools have now started. Uh, they have completed the first year. We have a number of students from different parts of Asia. Uh, and we have faculty from different parts of the world. Uh, the next school that we want to introduce is the School on Buddhist Studies, Comparative Religions and Philosophy. That I think has to do with uh, Nalanda itself being an important institution that imparted knowledge of Buddhism. So that is the third school we want to establish perhaps in 2016 uh, and that requires various kinds of infrastructure uh, as well. So we hope that we'll have that ready by 2016. The other school set that we are planning uh, is language and uh, literature that perhaps in 2017 um, again we'll introduce in the new phase manner. Uh, the, the other school that uh, we want to have is economic and uh, management school. Uh, that is uh, again to to relate to the contemporary need uh, of, of education in Bihar and in, in South Asia as well. Uh, we also have plans for international relations and, and peace studies. Uh, that is something we hope to uh, organize and implement 
with help from the Japanese so who are very interested in the peace studies aspect of it. And finally, the seventh school is information uh, science and technology because IT is uh, very important uh, not only for South Asia but the whole world to get connected. So that's another school. Uh, that we want to introduce uh, in a phased manner. But these are seven schools where we may at some point uh, look at other schools that will be introduced. Uh, this is a postgraduate university, so we expect students to come with some knowledge uh, and, and then get into more depth as they take uh, any of these subjects. We uh, planned for at least seven schools, all of them interdisciplinary. We did not want to follow the model of disciplines as they have been defined in uh, Western universities since about 1870. And then we took a strategic decision to start uh, the university with two schools, the School of Historical Studies and the School of Ecology and Environmental Studies. I'm a historian myself, and I think that there is a great opportunity at Nalanda to build a very distinctive, uh, almost unique school of historical studies, one that will uh, focus on inter-Asian connections of all kinds. Uh, Asia is having an economic revival now. Uh, Asia went into decline in the context of the global economy from about the 1810s. But in the 2010s, the scenario has changed dramatically. And we have to study the flows of capital and labor, skills and services, ideas and cultures, which connected the different parts of Asia. So there is a great school for comparative and connective Asian history uh, to uh, become the feature of the School of Historical Studies. Also, uh, Historians have moved beyond the nation and there is a new trend in terms of writing global histories. So that is also something that we can uh, pursue at the cutting edge. But in the School of Ecology and Environmental Studies, we are going to be addressing a major contemporary challenge. Uh, the environmental uh, challenge is perhaps the most serious global challenge that we face today. But this school enables us to cross the boundary between the humanities and the sciences as well. So there are many scientific dimensions uh, of how we plan to protect our uh, environment. But it is a matter which also relates to even Buddhist philosophy. How do we uh, create just the right balance between nature uh, and uh, human beings. Uh, human beings have of late been launching an assault on nature. We need to learn how to live with nature. Well, these largely, as you know, fall in three dimensions. First, there are many of these things which are intergovernmental. And I think it is the fostering the cooperation of many countries within the Asian regions. Since so this was an, a, an initiative of the East Asia Summit, where uh, India had played also an important role, I think these countries are cooperating and collaborating. But the old Nalanda went far beyond Asia. Uh, the old Nalanda footprints of old Nalanda were visible all over the world. So the second dimension is to look beyond Asian countries in building relationship with them. Many, many countries have shown strong interest. And then the third dimension, of course, is going beyond government with academic institutions, uh, with centers of excellence e elsewhere in the world, with Yale University, for instance, with universities in Australia, with the Peking University, with the Japanese University. We have got um, a, um, a number of collaborations going uh, as a result of this project. In fact, a uh, number of countries have themselves come forward to offer financial contributions. Uh, but also now we are looking at uh, enhancing the scholarships from India uh, for specific countries. So we already instituted these for the uh, CMLB countries, which are four in number, and plus we've also initiated it for Bhutan. In future, this will be extended also to countries like Nepal, uh, Bangladesh, and Myanmar, etc. 
uh, which would uh, then form a nucleus of neighboring countries which would be able to contribute uh, a lot of students in the future. And that's what we want to do because to create Nalanda as a center of excellence in the neighborhood first and after that to increase this its influence um, and name in the outside world. So even some European countries like Portugal for instance are interested in signing an MOU and have signed an MOU with Nalanda University uh, with the government on Nalanda University uh, and in terms of collaboration with the university is seeking uh, I think we will put all our weight behind to see that it becomes a network of universities will benefit Nalanda in the end. Many countries uh, have already made generous and down Singapore is, uh, uh, is proposing to build a library as part of its endowment endeavor. Australian government have made an important contribution in, in giving a chair and also some resources. The Chinese have made a contribution. The Thais have made a contribution. Contributions have begun to come in from governmental and non-governmental entities. But this is really indeed the tip of the iceberg. As the university gathers momentum, as chairman, I expect to garner far greater international response as the awareness of Nalanda and what is in the offing begins to sink in more. I expect we will have a very healthy kind of an endowment fund which will not merely finance some of the important activities of Nalanda, but the best shining example of public funds being blended with private cooperation and private initiative. Then it is the endeavor of the Endowments Committee to be able to harness this private initiative in consonance with governmental effort. When you are in an academic enterprise, you have to be totally dedicated to the academic enterprise and you don't have to worry about rank and uh, rank and race and class anything like that uh, uh, university is a place for critical analysis so a student can challenge a professor uh, nobody has a monopoly of knowledge Everybody is willing to strive constantly. And just so the students have to excel at their examinations, the staff, has, faculty has to be continuously improving themselves so that they are worthy of the students they are teaching. And I think that is the mark of an excellent place is that nobody sort of stops improving themselves. You know, we all need constant improvements and that should be the spirit of university. I consider there is there is one instrument or one armament which makes the quality of university that is the faculty, the teachers. I think faculty or teacher make the biggest condition for any university to excel in quality. Now what does it mean by excellent teacher or excellent faculty? Teachers are basically the specialist in different areas and they go to the extreme peak of that area but what is expected of a good teacher or from a quality teacher is that when they reach the peak from there they universalize it they spread it on the sites or they spread they disseminate it further and this results in finding out solutions to various type of problems or various type of issues this means that their specialization acts as a mean to find the solutions. This ultimately results in grooming wonderful students. We want to do what we can do best, what the world needs and for which we have the resources and the feasibility to, to, to proceed. And I think, uh, I mean I've been in a modest way since I've been Chancellor of this university since its inception in a modest way. I hope I'm right in thinking that we have been doing that, but we have to pursue it more. We have to make it larger, uh, and uh, everything starts very small. Even the fifth century in Alunda itself started tiny, but we can make it bigger, we can make it larger, we can make it even more relevant to the world than it already is. And that is, uh, you know, I'm moving away as Chancellor of this university, but my commitment was not going to change to that. I first visited Nalanda age of 11, holding my grandfather's uh, hand, and we gave completely bowled over 
by what I saw in Nalanda. That vision, that extraordinary uh, history uh, still makes me uh, thrill and I hope that we do succeed in making it into one of the great universities of which Gautam Buddha would have been proud. <laughs>